We can never say thank you enough for your great love for us. Thank you, Lord. From the depth of our heart, from the depth of our heart, we say thank you. You have done us no ill. You have done us no harm. You have done us no wrong. You always said, do not err, make a mistake, dear brethren. Every good gift, every perfect gift coming from above, from a father of lights, in whom there is no variableness, neither any shadow of turning. We acknowledge that thou art the good God. Thou art the holy God. The righteous God. Righteous and true are all of your judgments. You have never done us wrong. You have never done us ill. This morning, evening we judge you faithful. We mark you right. We find no fault in you. We declare that you have done us well. You have done us well. You have done us nothing but good all the days of our lives. So we say thank you. Thank you tonight. Thank you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ever faithful father. Thank you. That which we don't understand you're enlightening us about. We trust you. We honor you. We rest in you. Tonight we receive grace and mercy for this service. We receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The knowledge of you flowing freely unhindered by any satanic force. We yield ourselves to the ministry of the precious Holy Spirit. We receive eyes that see and ears that hear and a wiser understanding heart. That which is required to answer every question, to dissolve every doubt, to break every limit or ceiling, to move your people upwards and forwards, to transfer graces and miracles here and manifest miracles here this evening. As we break bread, as we celebrate communion, as we honor you tonight, we thank you for it. Thank you for it. Thank you for all that you are doing. Thank you for all that you will yet do. We vow to give you all the glory and honor and praise for all that is accomplished here tonight. We'll be content to receive the blessing. Thank you and thank you and thank you. In Jesus' precious name. Let all that agree with that shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let all that agree with that shout amen. amen. Well, put those hands together and give the Lord a mighty shout of praise somebody. Glory, 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 glory. Help me prophesy somebody your left and right. Say, in the name of Jesus, you are moving upwards and forwards. Say, the word of the Lord is working like fire for you. This is your year of ever increasing glory. This is your month of advancement and progress. Say, that which you need to understand, you are understanding. That which you need to see, you are seeing. That which needs to happen is happening in the name of Jesus. Say everything is all right. Say God loves you and everything is all right. If you believe that, give the Lord a shout of praise one more time. Hallelujah. God loves you and everything is all right. Praise the name of the Lord. Kindly be seated in God's holy presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Psalmist Paul, for that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, let's appreciate him. Hallelujah. What a blessing. We are not unaware of what is going on, hallelujah, in our nation today. But in all these things, we are more than conquerors. And I pray tonight that the Lord honor you in a very special way. Very special way for prioritizing the house of the Lord. You know, it is in times of pressure that you begin to understand what is in people's heart. It becomes so easy for you to make an excuse not to pursue God. But I tell you, the ones that pursue God in this hour are the ones that get his special attention. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's not make, not make a mistake about it. God loves us all equally. And that's the truth. That's the truth. We can't do anything to earn God's love. Hallelujah. But I tell you, there are things that you do in response to his love that uh, put you ahead of other people. That's the truth. Are you here, somebody? I was sharing with somebody today and I said, you know, I've been having a very, very... Uh, I think it was when I was talking today that it came out in my spirit, an impression about particularly these particular elections in Nigeria. And um, I, I'm not going to talk because I'm not going to claim to be a prophet or anything like that. Hallelujah. I just believe that when all is said and done, that uh, this election is going to shift Nigeria forward. I don't know if it's going to be the immediate outcome of the election or something that will happen, but this year will move Nigeria forward. And the election will be a trigger. But um, I want to say this very responsibly because it's really been in my heart for quite a while that um, I'm not talking politics now. Make sure that when you vote for the presidential election, especially the presidential election, you're on the Lord's side. 
That's what I'm going to tell you. Make sure that you vote not just your conscience, but the truth. Let's stand for truth. Forget about anything in the natural that is taking place. There is a movement within the realm of God's kingdom that has nothing to do with politics. And the best way I can describe it is when Gideon was, was, was told that he was going to be a deliverer against Midian. You know, it was a hopeless situation. The Bible said that the Midianites, they were like grasshoppers. When they come and feel, they wait for the harvest time. When Israelites have suffered and planted and, and they're just about to reap their harvest, then the Bible said they come and spread like grasshoppers. Intimidate Israel. Israel will hide like insects in caves. And they will come and reap all the labor of Israel for that year. Hallelujah. And God raised a man called Gideon and raised him against impossible odds. Listen, God has always done what he's going to do against natural human impossibility. If, listen, if, if there's no natural human impossibility, God is not there. Because when God moves, he doesn't want there to be any question who got the victory. So the more impossible your case looks, the more you should stand in faith. Because that's when your God will show up. When there will be no question, you won't be able to say that you had anything to do in it. So my point here is that the picture I'm seeing is that there is in the body of Christ a separation taking place. And it's going to be like when God was going to ask Gideon. Gideon had 34,000 fighting men. But 34,000 fighting men were nothing compared to the Midianites. Yet in the selection process, it came to less than a tithe of the tithe. Tithe of 34,000 is 3,400. Tithe of the tithe is 340. But when God was finished with the selection process, there was just 300 men left. And with that 300, he said, with this 300, you will go up and smite Midian as one man. So God does not need number. God is never in popular vote. He doesn't even need number. But my point is, be very careful because this, your thumb, is going to reveal your heart. And angels are going to be looking at how you vote this presidential election. Listen, it doesn't matter the outcome. Because I've always said this, whether Obi wins or not, whether uh, Tinubu wins or not, or Atik wins or not, you as a child of God will be preserved. But there's a selection going on in the spirit. Just like angel God selected, he said, Gideon, I'm going to show you how to select the people that I'm going to use. Let them go and let them drink water from the brook. Some put their arms down and lay down and they were lapping like this, like dogs. He said, tell them to go home. They're not the kind of people I need. Then he said, let them go again. And some were sitting, were, were, were knelt down and had their arm, arm, you know, arm, you know, equipment of war, weapons of war. And they knelt down and they were scooping with one hand, their weapons in one hand. And they'll be drinking and they'll be looking around. He said, these are the men I want. 300. Now I'm telling you this, I'm speaking very responsibly, that what you do, forget gubernatorial, presidential election, angels are going to watch how you vote. And it's going to determine how much God entrusts you with in the future. Because this election is going to make God push some people aside. He said, but you're going to see underdogs rise after this election. God is going to move people from the back to the front. He said, now I can trust you. I'm telling you this as God's servant. And I'm not talking as PDP, APC, Labour, or anything. I'm telling you that angels are going to be watching how you vote. And how you vote is going to determine whether these prophecies are going to come to pass in your life. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. So I'm not talking politics. Because Isaiah 60 is a prophecy concerning what God is doing on the earth today. And God is selecting people. I'm telling you, it may look like an election to you, but for God's people, not the world, forget the world, for God's people, ministers and people who are not ministers alike, people called to the fivefold ministry, listen, after this election, God is going to put aside some ministers of the gospel. He will put them aside. Do you know that when God promotes you, you're promoted? Do you know when God does not promote you, you're finished? You can carry a name, but you're just a shell. I'm telling you this responsibly. Honestly, I'm telling you responsibly that this presidential election is a spiritual selection process. Forget politics. God is doing something on the earth today. He's going to raise people in the kingdom of God, regardless of who is in power. But I can tell you the truth. Before 2023 is over, the right person will be in power. That's all I'll tell you. It may or may not come out as a result of this presidential election. But before the year is over, 
the right person will be in power. See, that's all I'll tell you. But as for you and your household, please make sure that, when, that you pray very well. Though, because as you vote like this on Saturday, angels will determine whether you have a future in, prophet, in prophecy in the future. Whether you have a future in Isaiah 60, 60. Whether you have a future. God's going to raise people from the back to the front. You will see what will happen. This year, you will see what will happen. So don't vote your belly. Don't vote your tribe. Don't vote your sentiment. Stand for truth. I don't care about the gubernatorial election. Presidential. You better know that God is selecting people. I'm telling you this. I didn't plan this. Oh. This thing is burning my heart. It's today. As I was talking to somebody, it came out of my spirit. And I saw it clearly. Because this is what I've been, I've been telling people that this election it has a spiritual significance. Not even about the outcome. But God is selecting people. I'm telling you, many ministers of the gospel will, will be set aside by God. Many Christians will be set aside. So no, these ones don't qualify. You think, it's, you think it's a normal election? It doesn't matter about who is seeing you. Angels are looking at you vote. I'm not threatening you. I'm just telling you the truth. Some people just discover that they'll just move to insignificance. Their influence and affluence will be taken away from them overnight. And God will start raising people. I'm not a politician, no. I'm not a politician. I'm not a tribalist. If I was a tribalist, this church would be a plateau church. This church is not a plateau church. I hate those kind of things. Me, I'm for Jesus Christ. Me, I'm on the Lord's side. I don't care. Advantage. I, I, I want to be what, where God is at any point in time. So you can sit down and talk about any other thing. But presidential election Saturday. Don't say I didn't tell you. I, I was telling the Lord, why didn't this clarity come to me on Sunday? I said, I don't know why. Maybe he wants to bless people who are committed to services like this because many times God does unusual things in select company sometimes it's a mixed multitude that come on Sunday so if they hear that's their business but I'm telling you this I'm telling you this very spiritual election not for politics but for you and me and our destiny me I've labored too long and had in the body of Christ for me to come and be silly at this time this polit this election is going to change destinies of God's people and God's ministers. Some ministers will become move into oblivion after this election. You see, very spiritual election. So that's what I'm going to tell you now. Then I'll use the rest of my time to attempt to. But I, I'm telling you this from my heart. If I'm a responsible shepherd, thank God nobody here is feeding me, and I'm not I'm not a partisan person. But there's some times that you need to be spiritual. Not sometimes, most times. You need to be spiritual to understand. I've been shouting. That the Lord didn't let me off Isaiah 60. He said, you're not done. It's not a subject you can ever be done. But he said, at least to the end of February. We just have one more Sunday to go. Then March will enter something else. Hopefully, maybe. But there's something. God is doing something on the earth. God is doing something in our country. And God's doing something on the earth is beyond politics it has to do with god's end time army and agenda please he's looking at you be is it not esau that opened his mouth and said what is my birthright to me you know for a long time in my life i thought and i was saying god ah but you're not unjust now how you just allow esau and his mother to, i mean jacob and his mother to just do this and do this for esau and he might he showed me reminded me that with the words of his mouth he was serious he, he, he that's why the bible called esau profane profane fellow, not worthy of a birthright. Because he judges by sight. He's a man of the flesh. He's a man of the flesh. We can't afford this. Apart from the generality of Nigeria, in your own life, you can't be a person of the flesh. You can't afford it any longer. Your inheritance is not found in the flesh. You must be a person of the spirit. Let me tell you, God has always done what he's going to do against Hopeless natural odds. Are you here, somebody? So don't be a person of the flesh. A time will come in your life, you know it. Forget Nigeria now. A time will come in your life that you have to stand and refuse to compromise. Everybody is going to have a moment in their life, a Daniel moment, where lion's den is here and your life is here. But I tell you the truth if you refuse to bow, you will not burn. Everybody will have a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego program. As a matter of fact, if you don't have an opportunity to believe God in the midst of compromise, you can never be promoted. You can never be promoted. Though. 
Promotion comes when there's an opportunity to choose God or choose the world or choose compromise. When you stand for God, God will do the impossible in your life and then you're promoted. That's how promotion comes. But you keep yielding to the flesh, sorrow and misery. Are you here somebody? So me, I've spoken my own. And you, you can, you can as, I am not a politician. I'm a minister of the gospel. And I've said my own. This presidential election is a spiritual sorting. After the election of Saturday, portal has closed. God has selected who is going to work with going forward. I'm telling you the truth, though. So I think I'll shut up. I've said enough. Sit down. Isaiah 60. Our emphasis today is go for light. Go for light. We began that, we, we, started, we, we got into that a lot in uh, the two services on um, Sunday. Child of God, you are never disadvantaged. Sir, ma, even if you have made a mistake, because of the blood of Jesus, there is remedy for you. But you must understand what your priorities in life should be. The chief resource of the child of God is this thing called revelation knowledge. Spiritual understanding, light. Now there are two things Paul the Apostle prayed for all that came to know Jesus under his ministry and that has to do with every believer. There are two most vital, more important than money, more important than husband, wife, child, advancement in career, more important than anything. Two things. Number one, spiritual understanding, which is light. That's what the Bible calls light. Then number two, spiritual strength. These are the two things. You have these two things, you become everything God has said you are. You scale any height. You leap through every wall. Listen, even if it's your mistake that's put you where you are, you are just one step away. Just repent and readjust. God is not against you. He's for you. But these are your two things. These are the two things in life you must prioritize. When you find an apostate church, they are forsaken spiritual, they are forsaken revelation. And, because, and then they are not leaning to God for strength. Paul prayed in Colossians chapter 1 verses 9 to 11. He said, from the time that I heard of it, of your conversion, I did not cease to pray for you that God will fill you with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. That you might be fruitful in every good work. So that everything that Jesus said is yours can become a reality. You don't need the whole world liking you. You just need the right people liking you. And you locate the right people when you walk in God's light. That you might be walk worthy of the Lord, being fruitful in every good work. You will please him in everything. Are you here somebody? And then that you might be strengthened with all might. Because life requires courage, sir. So many times you have to make a decision not to go with the pack. Many times you have to make unpopular decisions. I'm not just talking about being a rascal. No. I'm saying that when God shows you some things, he will set you on a path. And many times it will mean that you're going to make many decisions that even people who love you will, will begin to attack you because they think you're crazy. I hear somebody. Because spiritual understanding will set you on a course in your life. You will never become what God has planned for you with people liking you all the time. I'm not saying you should just choose to be controversial. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you are enlightened, God sets you on a path. Where your inheritance is. Maybe it's not taught too much in these last days because we have misunderstood what the grace of God is. Grace makes you a warrior, sir. Grace gives you courage. Sometimes you stand alone. You know the Bible says something in Proverbs, I can't remember where it's there. It said, to the man who is first in, the man who is first in his cause always seems right. <laughs> Just because you have a semblance of success does not mean you're right. Just because you can gather money does not mean you're right. Just because you have the greatest likes on social media doesn't mean you're right. You see, I don't understand this thing. Since yesterday, since Sunday, some kind of anointings have been moving one kind of way. I just want to preach this kind of message. Everybody will be happy with Pastor Dunka. But this kind of message will make you happy indeed when you, if you follow it to the end. This life, you need life to navigate. Have you ever been in a situation where our blessed country that God is changing, they take electricity? 
And you, maybe you have a pastor, maybe you don't, but you want to keep something handy. Maybe you have a torch. Or maybe you have a phone that has, um, most phones have it, that have a torch, right? Do you, how do you feel when everywhere is pitch dark and you can't see anywhere? Be honest, how do you feel? There's a sense of helplessness. Pitch dark. I'm talking about naturally. But how do you feel when you take a, a, a light source? How do, you, how, do you, how do you feel when you can... Yeah, some people, maybe depending on where they take... If you're in your own home, your own living room or bedroom, you're so used to it. Even if they take light, you can have a sense and feel, okay, this is on this side, this is on that side. But, but I'm talking about when you're in a situation where there's a, is pitch darkness and then a light source is introduced. How do you feel? Is there a sense of relief? Thank you, Ma. Is there a sense of confidence when you know which way to go? Is there a sense of confidence where you know how many of you have, even in your own bedroom, or in a room, you're, this thing, you're, you're rushing to go somewhere, and then your little toe, they call it your pinky. No, the pinky is this one. But your little toe. Have you ever hit your toe on the bed stop? Pain, no get part two. You feel it to hear. Have you ever hit your toe on the side of the bed? <laughs> you do, you, you be dancing. They say, what's happening? That's how believers are stumbling in life. That's how believers are stumbling in life. Because they don't understand God's greatest resource. You always want people to talk well about you. You always want to be in the crowd that everybody's admiring. That's a recipe for disaster. Your greatest, your greatest weapon is light. And, I've, and I'm saying, because the Holy Ghost is crying this thing out. When he stops crying in my spirit, I'll stop. I'll go something else. I'm not afraid of preaching a message at the same time, even though I've not succeeded in doing it. It may have the same scriptures, but it's not the same message. Look at Isaiah 60. Look at, look at the uncertainty of our days. Sir, do you know it's time to prove God's word? The Lord spake unto me with a strong hand saying, don't walk in the way of these people. Isaiah chapter 8, the, verse 9. The Lord spoke to me with a strong word. Do not walk in the way of these people. Don't fear their fear. Sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. And then he will be a sanctuary for you. Forget all these braggadocious things they're saying. They can't do you nothing if you make God your sanctuary. All this pressure of fear. Don't talk their language. So what if there's no money in circulation? Don't talk their language. It's time for you to walk on the water. So what if they're making the system tight? The good gospel news is that they are not God. But it's the light in you that will come out when there's pressure. Are you here somebody? Let's look at verse 9. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said Hallelujah. <laughs> When things are tough round about you, what you need is to hear from God. Not to be running from pillar to post. You must know where God has appointed bread for you. Your church is the house of bread. Some people, when they're under pressure, they go to all kinds of people. Your church is the house of bread, the house of light. If indeed an individual has been called to your pastor in, to, be, to pastor you in his light or the a light, you will see light. Associate yourself, all you people, and you shall be broken in pieces. I give here all you the, of far countries. Gird yourself, you shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourself, and you shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together, it shall come to nothing. Are you here, somebody? Listen, all these things they're doing in Nigeria is working against them all. Listen, 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 listen. This is the season that the cup of the wicked in Nigeria is full. But let me tell you something. Let me just give you a hint about the next few months in Nigeria. God does his best work in confusion. He uses natural confusion to distract the devil. Then you go and cut him off from the root. People not here. Take counsel together. It shall come to nothing. Speak the word. It shall not stand for God is with us. Is God with you? Is God for you? Are you sure? then nothing, no counsel against you shall ever prosper. God is with you. You'll be with God too. It's two way. God is with you. you also be with God. Because some people think that hey, God is with me. God is with me. God is with you as long as you are with him. 
So if you say, God is me, God is me, I'm a child of grace. Okay. He will not condemn you, but you can't, you can't just be against God and he'll be defending you. That's not the gospel. Nobody can convince me that's the gospel. That grace means you can just do anything you like and God will be defending you. That ain't the, that's not the gospel. That's a dangerous half-truth. Take counsel together, it shall come to nothing. Speak the word, it shall not stand, for God is with us. Nothing they will do with us. We are rising in this land. We are rising in this city. In your life, listen, he said, if God be for you, who or what can successfully be against you? How do you know that God is for with you? If God did not spare his only son, but gave him up for you, how shall he not also with him freely give you all things? Listen, you are invisible. You cannot be defeated. Let the devil not bring your mistakes before you. It's none of his business. We're in blood territory now. We're in blood ground now. Take counsel together, it shall come to nothing. Speak the word, it shall not stand, for God is with us. Ah, yeah. Look at verse 11. For the Lord spake to me with a strong hand. I hear him shouting to the church in Nigeria. Strong hand. He instructed me. I should not walk in the way of these people saying. Are you somebody? A conspiracy to all to whom to these people shall say a conspiracy. Listen, I don't claim to be a prophet, but I'm seeing something in my spirit. Though. I'm seeing that a time will come in the next few months that people will come and fill the streets of Nigeria and shut this country down. I didn't say God told me, oh, I just have a sense in my spirit. Don't be afraid of their fear or be afraid. Neither fear their fear. Look at Neither fear their fear. Nor be afraid. Ah. Fear cubed. <laughs> say you won't survive. Say you won't rise. Say you won't marry. Say you won't live long. Don't fear their fear. Nor be afraid. God hates fear. Look at 13. But you sanctify. Sanctify means make God big in your heart. Listen, it is what you think about always that will become big in you. Don't speak what they're speaking of. Wicked men are manipulating the system, but don't prophesy with them. Hey, what do they want to do? No money in circulation. Hey, they, how we go do? Don't prophesy with them. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. Let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. It's time for you to be immersed in God's word. Immersed in God's word. Like a fool. Immersed in God's word. I hear somebody. Verse 14. When you do that, he will become for you a sanctuary. You know what a sanctuary is? A place where you can't be touched. A defense. <laughs> See, men can be saying it will not work for you, but it will be working as they're saying it won't work. God is my sanctuary. God is my defense. A stone of stumbling for a rock of offense to both the house of Israel, for a gene and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Now go back to Isaiah 60, please. Verse 1. Our, our thought is go for light. I, I wish I could bring my intestine. Go for light. Don't be a church. Don't be, don't be a religious church. Go for light. These are trying times. You need your personal light, sir. See the confidence that comes when you put a light source on in darkness. Look at the confidence that comes to you when you begin to know which way to go. As a believer, you are not supposed to be blind. Isaiah 42, 16, I'll bring the blind by way that they knew not. I'll lead them along paths that they have not known. I'll cause darkness to become light before them. Crooked things to become straight. These things will I do for them unto them and not forsake them. It's not time for bandwagon. You must walk in your personal light. You must have a personal conviction. If you said a thousand may fall by your side, ten thousand by your right hand side, none of these things shall come near you. So it has, it has, it has passed the place of probability. It has passed the place of logic. It will work for those that believe. That's what it is. So arise, shine for your light. Your light. Your personal light. Listen, a man, I'm talking about he or she now. An individual, a person cannot do more than what they know. When I look at your manifestation, it's what you know. When I see the decisions you're, you're taking, when I see the pathway you're taking, it's what you know. You cannot do more than what you know. So you need to increase what you know. Your light. This light means illumination. 
just make it simple tonight he's talking about spiritual understanding when when life closes down on you you need your personal light then the glory then you arise and shine the glory of the lord is risen upon thee look at this verse 2 for behold look and see the darkness shall cover the earth see wicked men boasting see wicked men boasting they believe we have set are we not the ones that set up this country the systems of this country no nothing you do we're winning this election you may rig it but will you live to see it you may rig it will you live to see it they boast they boast that they have people's destinies in their hand they boast and brag that without them you can't go far in life they they rage that's the devil like nebuchadnezzar he said behold the darkness shall cover there that darkness is talking about wickedness destruction misery death is that not what is happening People don't, they don't care about the masses. They don't care. They have their evil agendas. Maybe two or three people are fighting, then they want to shut down the whole country. But 2023, that reign will end. Ah, it will end. No man is bigger than Nigeria. You didn't put Nigeria together. It's not your wisdom that put Nigeria together. Some of them, their ambitions to be president will be the death of them. I'm telling you this. Ah, are you not here? Are you not praying? Are you not standing in blood? Look at me. I've not gone anywhere. I'm just going to be 55 this year. Forget this white thing. This white thing. I just. I didn't use them bamboozle people. Apart from the fact that I die, no one clear them. But listen to me. Not on my watch. Will my children be slaves? This is their country. Wherever ever they go in this world, this is their country. Not on my watch. With what I know. With what I know, what's the use of the blood of Jesus? What's the use of the word of God I know? Is this Bible true or not true? Not on our watch. Oh. Not on our watch. We'll not carry AK-47 to that, but we are bigger than AK-47. The darkness shall cover the earth. Darkness has covered Nigeria. Is raw occultic power. The reason why they're doing this is because they're standing in blood of human beings and animals sacrificed. They said anything we do, these people will just be like fools before us. Ah, but they're backing down the wrong tree this time. They're backing down the wrong tree this time. This presidential election will be the death of some of them. The darkness shall cover this earth. Gross darkness of people. People who don't have God will start panicking. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? That's why I, I counsel believers, don't talk like them. Don't talk like them. It's time for you to exercise your covenant. Never allow yourself to feel helpless, hopeless, or a victim. You say, Pastor, how do we do that? You enter the Bible now. You press into the light and act like you believe it. It's not a storybook. But look at this. This is the exemption clause. This is the exemption clause. Listen, as I was coming to church, the Lord said, look, I must charge the people of God to carry an exemption mentality. Please. You can, you can only get it from God's word. You must carry an exemption mentality. This darkness, these dark days, you must carry an exemption mentality. And tonight's communion is for exemption. It's for exemption. It's for exemption. The pressure the devil is putting on this nation will not swallow you. You are preserved. You are protected. You are provided for. And there are workings of miracles for you. But the Lord shall arise. Hey! Jeremiah 20, 11, the Lord has gone before me as a mighty, terrible one. He shall arise. Ah, darkness is the playground for light. It's the place where light will start showing up. His glory shall be seen upon you. That's why I say it's time for you to stand for the Lord. Oh. It, doesn't, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't have to be something that you're, you're putting on social media. But between you and God, you must know that I am for the God of the angel armies. He's the same God, though, that slew 186, is it? 180, 180, how many thousand? Angels in one night. He's the same God, though. Angels are spirits. Those angels are still there. Angels don't die. The angels are still there, though. And they have filled this nation. They have filled this nation, though. I tell you, angels will be looking at how you vote. On Saturday, Nami, they tell you. 
if you like say I'm a false prophet, I agree. But as for me and my house, we are for Jesus. Because the glory of God is going to shine in your, our, your life regardless of what happens. You will just be rising like this. God will move resources your way. People, places and things. It's show off time for the body of Christ. But please, God's on your side. Please be on his side. His glory shall be seen upon thee. Verse 3. Hallelujah. And men without covenant shall come to your light. I see them bragging. Oh, they're bragging and boasting. Aye. These things have happened before. There's nothing new under the sun. Eh? Matos Mutasa, Belshazzar, Sulkin Babylon. Belshazzar, the king of Babylon. <laughs> what about Sanakirib? Kesenakirib, Kachema Hezikaya. I went to a very religious secondary school. That's the first time I knew that they can call somebody's name Sinakirip. I said, what? The people that name is do they know the meaning of Sinakirip? Most of them were pastor's kids. The pastor would not even research to know what the meaning of the name is. They said Sinakirip. <laughs> you see, you see, God, boasting. Hezekiah, the man of covenant. They didn't say that if you're a covenant man, you'll not be challenged. Or when you're challenged, please know where to go. I love it. He took the letter and he spread it before the Lord. So, man, look at this man. Look at what he has written. God told Hezekiah, Hezekiah, don't worry. I will, put a, I will put a hook in his jaw and turn him by the way that he came. You see, we need to go and read the Bible. Believers in Nigeria today behave as though the Bible stories are just Bible stories. I said, we don't believe the Bible again. Nations came against Hezekiah. Five of them outnumbered him. He said, everybody will fast. Suck, to the suckling, even suckling, don't give baby suck. Three days, they won't die. Fast, go before the Lord. Look at what God did. I hear somebody? Listen, listen, listen. I, I tell people, situations that look hopeless are time for you to prove your God. But you must, you must be serious in seeking this God. That you just do something one, two, three days and you just give up. Who gets anything that way? Are you here somebody? Oh, Lord help me. I know you're helping me. Isaiah 63. So that's gross darkness. People feeling helpless, hopeless. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? That's the kind of thinking that says, well, I'm not going to go and vote what I believe is right because, because it's clear that people do whatever they want to do. No, you go do what you need to do and let God do what only he can do. Are you here, somebody? I like that. Most of you have seen that video of that. I, I love that. I love that preacher that challenges people. Oh, I love that man. So all of you, I'm going to pray a prayer for you. That the candidate you vote... May your children be like that. May the destinies of your children be like that. It's all of them looking at him and say they're going to kill him. May your, may, the, may your children's destinies and your destiny be like the people you are voting the power in Jesus' name. I don't understand what's happening today, but maybe not this combat and all this muscle hog there. I'm not a politician, but I have, I, I have enough sense to know what is right. You are suffering to continue. Let's just take a stand for God now. Can we just, let's throw our lives in God's hand. Let's just throw our life in God's hand. And see if he won't catch us. I was, telling, I was sharing with Pastor Isaac the other day, I said, don't we do that every day? It's not how we live every day. Just trusting God in the midst of circumstances that seem that nothing will work. We just trust God and God happens. Why do you think you can't do it for the nation? The Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the bride. It's not uh, beyond politics. It's not politics. Men of covenant shall come to your light. Kings to the brightness of rising. How do you think that it's going to come? It's going to come when they see the supernatural in your life. 
when they see you rising against all odds. It's a war of God. Though. And God is not afraid of the burden of proof. He's not afraid of the burden of proof. They behave like David and Goliath's story is not true. They believe it's not, like it's not true. They behave as if uh, Elijah being fed by ravens is not true. See that little one there? She's going to grow up. Oh. And she's going to ask all of you in this church who, do you, who you voted for. Our country is still in a mess. Who did you vote for in that election anyway? You can't go anywhere. You can't go anywhere without courage. And courage is not willpower. Courage is in an impartation that comes to you as you stay in God's presence and imbibe his word. Do you know it takes courage to tithe? you know it takes courage to give to God? Do you know courage is an essential part of faith? You don't get it from, it's not willpower. It's an impartation that comes as you meditate upon God's word, listen to it, and with an open heart and spend time in prayer. Then he infuses that DNA into you to enable you to take positions. The devil will be shouting at you, I'll kill you, you will never do that. As you take that position, you see the supernatural manifesting. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now, this gross darkness is talking about is people's response to what is going on on the earth. And I said when people don't have a right, a proper relationship with God, and there's pressure on their life, they will be, you, you'll, be, you'll be amazed. You'll see all kinds of responses. All kinds of responses. People in desperation will start doing all kinds of things. But you know this gross darkness, I want to use one word to qualify it today, and that's fear. And that's the only thing that the devil trades with in this life, fear. Satan cannot do anything outside of fear. That's why Isaiah 8, it said, don't fear their fear. A time will come, everything will be shouting against you and your destiny. And you will have a sense of desperation. But that's the time to press into God's word and calm yourself down. Calm yourself down. And keep telling yourself, I trust God. I trust God. Are you here, somebody? Look at Luke, please, chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. What is the assignment of fear? Is to separate you from your faith. It's to make you start do, make, making stupid decisions. Stupid alliances. Fear is a sense, fear, fear has a sense of paralysis. It paralyzes initiative. And then fear makes you foolish and make foolish decisions. I keep telling that story about 2001 crisis. When someone who was a, a neighbor came out. Say, Pastor, 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 I'm just coming down from town, from um, around Kashima Ibrahim area. She, look at them, they are coming. Look at them, they are coming. He said, Go and get mama, go and get mama. Let's just be going. Let's just be going. Let's just be going. So he just transferred that fear to me. I won't lie. He transferred it. Fear is transferable. Faith is also transferable. So before I knew what I was doing, I turned around and started running to the house. Just before I got into the kitchen area, which we were asked, I just stopped. No, halfway in between the compound. I think it was the Holy Ghost that just helped me. I said, where am I going? So I came back. I said, where are we going? Where are we going? Where should we go? Where should we go? He said, anywhere. I said, what to you? Anywhere. And I saw people, they die. I calmed myself down. I said, hey, you know what? Lock these gates. I started thinking, I anointed the gates. Praise the name of the Lord. I said, I prayed another time. I said, everybody go to the house and calm down. Sit down. Sit down. Just trust God. You don't even know what's happening. Anywhere. The Bible says, Satan comes like a roaring lion. He's not a lion. He comes like, you know, you know, you know, lions. If you, if you study the lion, the lion, the, the male is the head of the pride. They call them pride. Usually you have one male, the alpha male there. Then you have other younger males. Then you have a lot of lionesses. It's the lionesses, the female lions that hunt. The male lion doesn't hunt. Lazy guy. So they'll, they'll bring down the prey. If the prey is very hefty, he may just come and jump on the thing and hold it down for the lioness to... Because what they do is they tear the neck, the, the throat open. And then, then the animal will there. Then the lionesses will move back. Everybody will move back. Then the male lion will come and eat his fill before the rest come and eat. That's how it is. But the reason why they need him is because he's very intimidating. And the roar of the lion is heard kilometers away. When animals hear the roar of the lion, they're paralyzed. 
They don't know where it's coming from. So they just fixated. That's how the devil is. He will shout, I will kill you. You're finished. You're in church, but you're saying money, come. Go home now. We'll see. Where's coming from? Now, me, are you there here? You want to just fixate you so you can't even open your mouth and say, Jesus, you can't even. Are you here, somebody? That's the devil's strategy. Now, look at Luke 22. You know, the, you know the assignment of fear is to separate you from your faith because, because fear makes you do very illogical things. Negative illogical. There's, a, there's an illogical in the realm of faith. There's an illogical in the realm of fear. Now look at Luke 22 verse 50, 31. 31. <laughs> now look at this. Somebody, let's, let's, let me just give a hypothetical case. Somebody is earning like 100,000 naira or 50,000 naira every month. Okay? And the law said tithe. I said, no, I can't tithe this 5,000 naira. Because if I tithe this 5,000 naira, what I would have used this 5,000 naira to do this month, how would I have done it? But if you sit down and look at yourself carefully, the 5,000 naira, how far is it going to take you? But God said, come on, partner with me so I'll put the supernatural on your life and take you further than you could have thought. We say, fear will hold you back. Hey, and they're saying, apart from that tithe, I must now give my offering. And must now do special projects. Kingdom investment. How about God? How should I live? But you don't understand that God multiplies your seed sown and pours grace upon you. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that you all the time, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound unto every good work. So when grace comes upon your life, God, that's the realm of faith. He will not show you everything. If not, it's no longer faith. God knows that as you release and obey him, that he will cause grace to come. He will cause opportunity to come from here. He will stir somebody's heart from there. He will do this one from here. He will do that one from there. And then you will find out that your 50,000 naira is nothing. If you look at your expenditure, you discover that you spend so much more than that. Or that favor came to you that could, could not be quantified in money. That's how God wants you to live. But fear will just make you hold back. The Lord says, Simon, Simon, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you. Sift you as wheat. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. So you see, what is that faith failing? It's, it's, it's fear coming. It's, it's, it's fear that collapses faith. Are you here, somebody? So he said, I prayed for you. I prayed for you. God said, I want to sift you. The sifting is through fear. The sifting is through fear. You will paint all kinds of consequences before you. Are you here, somebody? But Jesus, I prayed for you so that your faith will not fail. <laughs> Glory to God forevermore. So fear is the siege of the devil. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Fear is Satan's Number one, assassin. He cannot do anything in a believer's life until the believer opens the door through fear. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Hebrews 2, 14. Oh Lord, thank you. you thank you. He cannot do anything in the believer's life until the believer opens. Fear is a threat which the devil cannot execute. Except you open the door through fear. Fear is a suggestion that, that God is unfaithful or a suggestion that if you take a step to obey God, God will not come through for you. And the devil wants you to go that way because when you do that, you authorize him to do what he's painting a picture to do. He cannot do anything but paint a picture. He cannot do anything but suggest. But when you yield to it, you have now ceded your power to him to make it come to pass. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, Jesus also himself took part of the same. So that through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. Now look at this. Him that had, is that past tense or present tense? Is it past or present tense? Do I have believers here? Do I have believers here? In Christ, if you're in Christ, Satan had the power of death. He doesn't have it any longer. All he has is thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. But the actual power of death has been taken from him. Jesus stripped him of that. So I tell you with all boldness, Satan cannot kill you. 
Ay, 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 ay. He will create scenarios, so he will create all impression. He wants you to act on fear. He wants you to start saying things and start doing things. But the moment you refuse to cooperate with him and say and do and act like he wants you to say and do and act, listen, the door to fear is shut. He cannot execute his will in your life. All he can do is that he can create very heavy impression. I give an example one time, went to, um, by the grace of God, some years ago, went to uh, the Coca-Cola, um, uh, what is it called? Headquarters or something in Atlanta. And uh, they have inside there, amongst other attractions, they have a, 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 a what do you call it, a, a theater, 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 like a cinema, theater. And they have seats there. And the thing is 4D. So they give you glasses. And when you're looking, when you sit on those seats, eh, the seats are, are powered. And they're connected. So every, everything that's going on, all the music, all the sound, is, the seats are responding to it. So, for example, if there's like gunfire, the seats are shaking. And you have those glasses on. And those glasses make the thing look, you're in, you're in like 4D now. It looks like you are inside it. So when you see a shark, like a shark opening his mouth inside the water, you look like the shark is just there. So me, I was there. Man of God, like me. My friend was just laughing at me. So there was one time, there was this cartoon, one rabbit took a javelin, a spear, and threw it. Man, that spear was entering my eye. I just, I thought, man of God, man of God is funny. I said, I know, I know, I know, but these things, I know. But I'm an African, just in case. I don't go call America. Maybe they send somebody here. Maybe village people they here. You know, white people they don't get sense. Just in case, the devil will change 4D to enter. That's how the devil does. Fear will simulate. Fear will give you real simulation. See yourself in, in, see yourself in the coffin. See yourself poor forever. <laughs> see yourself dying alone. See yourself never carrying a child. Fear will just paint the picture. It will be so real. And some believers who know get sense, they'll just be confused. Why don't you allow your heavenly father to paint an alternative picture. Second Corinthians 3.18 says, we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. As in God's word, we are changed into the same image. Why don't you see, why don't you get involved with pictures of healing, pictures of health, pictures of abundance. Why don't you just sell out to God's word once and for all? The truth of the matter is that Satan has no power to make those pictures come to pass. Except you yield to them. Until you start talking them and acting on them. He has no power to bring them to pass. He may make the picture so real, but they are all a lie. It's called lying vanity. He said through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. I hear somebody? Had is past tense. That destroy, <laughs> see, eh? that destroy, eh? it means to make inoperative. To remove the power to operate. Another way of, of doing it is like, is like you decommission something. All right? It's like you've been given a letter for employment. You know how bankers are sometimes? I have a few friends in the bank and I've heard some other testimonies that corroborate with that. Or some of them who lost their jobs. They just go to the computer one day and they discover they can't log in. Decommissioned. <laughs> so from there, they just ask you to go to HR. You myself, if you know, say, Castle I don't boss. That is how death has been decommissioned in a believer's life. But you must meditate on this thing for it to become real for you. Thank God for what you're shouting now. But you must go home and meditate on it until that is the reality in your heart. Death has been decommissioned. And everything that comes with it, poverty has been decommissioned. It has no right to operate. If you operate in God's financial principles as a tither and a giver, it's been decommissioned. So your right to call forth money and money to come becomes activated when you get in line with God's plan of tithing and giving. You see, it's beyond the preacher's rhetoric trying to raise money. It's the truth of God's word. Are you here, somebody? Death has been decommissioned. He had the power of death. That is the devil. Now look, at. let's go ahead. And deliver them. Bring them out. Who through all their lifetime was subject to bondage. There was nothing they could do. They were, they were, they were, they were bound to it. They were tied to bondage by a law. There's nothing they could do. But Jesus decommissioned it. Oh, hallelujah. And then he gave us his name. 
Oh, he gave us his name. He gave us that name that is above every name. That at that name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we must stay with these words. We must stay with this truth. We must allow it to we refuse it to be diluted in our lives. So that when pressure comes, we rise up in boldness and confidence. Are you here somebody? Are you here somebody? So in these days of darkness, I beg you. I beg you, go for light. It's the greatest favor you can do for yourself. And all who God has committed, connected to you. And all, and all who you love. The greatest favor you can do for yourself and all in your community and your sphere of influence is to go for light. And the light shined in darkness and the darkness could not comprehend it. You need it. It's the confidence that comes when you know which way to go. Oh my God. I won't trade it for anything. I won't, I won't trade it for anything. Not money. Not anything. And deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. It is fear. That fear of death is not just fear of dying. It's fear of everything that spiritual death brought. Fear of poverty. It's fear of poverty that makes men steal. It's fear of poverty that makes people stingy. Fear is a, is a death force. I hear somebody. <laughs> Glory to God forevermore. But you know in Christ Jesus we have conquered fear. I say in Christ Jesus we have conquered fear. How do you conquer fear? Go for light. Isaiah 27 verse 1. Glory to God. I said glory to God. You want to win this war against fear? Go for light. In these last days, you look around you, anything and everything that can go wrong may go wrong. But listen to me. Your light, the light of God's word you, you work with and you walk in will lift you up above anything. Are you here somebody? The Lord is my light and my salvation. You see these personalized terms? My. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. So you see, light brings strength. Of whom shall I be afraid? You can also add, of what shall I be afraid? See, all looks at what you're looking at. Are you here, somebody? I don't have time for all these their lies that they spread everywhere. Some people are so fixated on social media, they can tell you what is current in social media. They can tell you what is current. For example, now they're saying that from Thursday, uh, that they say, I said, okay, okay, where is the source of that news? No, show me the authentic source of the news. He said, can't you see? Can't you see transactions are even hanging now? They've been hanging for weeks. For weeks. I traveled two weeks or so ago in bus. I have over three transactions I did at the airport because the aircraft was small. They charged me for excess luggage. I was paying thousands of naira. And I, I, thank God I had some cash on me. I eventually paid. But all my transactions going, coming, they're all hanging. I don't have time to go to the bank and pursue it for a refund. And it didn't reverse. Now, my point is this. I'm making a point. I'm making a point. The only authentic source of information to you should be God's word. Otherwise... How can you be planning and plotting on Satan's words? I'm, I felt guilty to it. The other day, I, I wrote one of our brethren in the bank because somebody sent, they sent all over, all of this, some of these organizations and part of Christian organizations. Some of them sent all kind of things and they said that, eh, watch it, if you have accounts in this bank, that bank, that bank, that bank, make sure you withdraw your money, change your money to this portal, change your money to this portal. So I said, oh boy, let me just check and see. So I sent it after, after, after our after the person, the brother I sent it to in the bank sent me back a reply, I was so ashamed of myself, Pastor, who are you? How could you fall for this kind of thing? Uh, so I just made it like a joke, say, you know, <laughs> I was just checking, you know, not lie. <laughs> I was not just checking because the thing entered my spirit. See, fear will just make you think all kind of thing. All kind of thing. Learn God's system and trust God. <laughs> 
<laughs> the Lord is my light and my salvation. Light is wisdom. Salvation, the Greek word, the Hebrew word there is Yesha, Yesha, Yeshua squared. Welfare, deliverance, provision, preservation. The Lord is my welfare. He's my well being. He's my provision. He's my deliverance. Whom shall I fear? Oh, hallelujah. I read when the Lord was teaching us, and He's still teaching us, but when we first started getting exposed to this message of biblical economics and financial prosperity, I read Kenneth Copeland's book, which I reread from time to time. Are you somebody? The Laws of Prosperity. You need to read that book. Gives you fundamentals. And he made a statement there. Many years ago, I read it. I always remind myself. He said, if bread becomes a thousand dollars for a loaf, we will buy it. I said, we'll buy it. I said, we'll buy it. The cash is available. I said, the cash is available. I said, the cash is available. If they put 20% on it, if I need it, I'll pay the 20% and take the cash. You have to renew your mind now. Are you going to be bogged down in this world system? He said, because they're now selling fuel at 195 or 220, so you go and keep your car there for two days. The humor you'll be there. You really have no ambition in life. He said, I'm seeing how much I'm saving. You know what? Time is money. Time is the money. God moves favor in time. Then you go and be yourself that in two days. I'm saying that after I'm not going to go, go and give that rascal 370. You see, many times I don't think we really think. Oh, it's like we got born again, we left our brain at home. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And all this money you're always trying to, you're just trying to save and say, how much has it really affected? <laughs> because, because this cash squeeze, it has affected everything. So the money you're saving, man, you're still paying something for something somewhere. Are you really saving money? You better just believe God and live your life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. He's my productivity. Of whom shall I be afraid? You need to be enlightened though. Let's go ahead. Look at this. Even my enemies and my foes come against me to eat up my flesh. It's not just talking about men. It's talking about demons operating through men. Demons operating through the world system. They come out to eat up my flesh. They say, we'll see how far you can go. They stumbled and fell. I, I say it again. Wicked men are bragging and boasting. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes come to, come to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Let's go ahead, let's go ahead, let's go ahead, please. Though an host should encamp against me, even if a host encamps against me, my heart, you see this? Is my heart that will not be afraid. You have to establish your heart in God's word. That light has to come. My heart shall not be afraid. I have learned this over and over and I'm still learning it. That once your heart is strengthened with God's word, the battle is over. My heart, all this thing happening is to get to your heart. Satan wants you to start prophesying with him. Instead of with God, I'm finished. It can't happen. How can I move forward? God is bigger than circumstances. You have to sit down with God's word. Though. If not, you just start taking wrong counsel, going to the wrong people, going for the wrong thing, wrong, all kind of things. You just sit down, just be messing your life up when your heart is not full of God's word. My heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to quiet in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Hey, I shall not be moved. Oh, I shall not be moved. And now shall my head be lifted up above all my enemies run about me. Therefore will I offer up his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praise unto the Lord. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Oh, I sing and I dance. In my closet, glory to God. No devil can overrun me. No devil can swallow me or my family up. I'm pursuing God's light. Now, let me just do this in maybe five minutes. So we can keep our covenant with you and get you out of here quickly. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. What is the source of light? What is light? Light is spiritual understanding. Is understanding God's word. Light, understanding of God's word causes you to see and understand clearly so you can start making right decisions and taking right positions in life. Sometimes when light comes to you, you can wait on God in the face of hopeless looking circumstances. Because he has shown you the end already. Are you here somebody? 
What is the source of light? God's word. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Psalm 119 verse 130, 130. The entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. Hallelujah. God's word is also God's wisdom like we saw in Psalm 27 verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. He's my wisdom and he's my, de my deliverance. Whom shall I fear? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now how do you go for light? Having understood that the source of, God's, of light is God's word. God's word is God's wisdom. How do you go for it? Number one, you must make it your priority. Job 23 verse 12. In these last days, please... In every circumstance of your life, make God's light and God's word your priority. We're talking about how to go for light now. Look at this, Job 30, 23 verse 12. Job said, I've esteemed your words more than my necessary food. Your priority. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Job 29 verse, yeah, that's it. Neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Let's look at Job 29 verse 2. Job said, Oh, that I were as in months past, as in the days when God preserved me. Yes. When his candle shined upon my, light, my head, when by his light I walked through darkness. You see this? That candle. Um, Psalm 28 verse 18. Psalm 18 verse 28. The Lord will enlighten my darkness. Hallelujah. Can you give me Psalm 18 verse 28? For thou, O Lord, will light my candle. That's talking about your spirit. The Lord will enlighten my darkness. So when the Bible said that God's candle shone upon Job's head, it's God's spirit that was enlightening him. Job was not born again, so his spirit was not born again. But Job was in covenant with God. So God's candle, God's spirit, God's light shone on Job. Are you here somebody? Then how, did, how was Job enlightened? Because he, 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 what? he esteemed God's words more than his necessary food. Bible scholars make us understand that Job is one of the oldest books of the Bible. Written. That was documented and written. But where did Job get scripture? Ah, Job was walking from, with, with God and the Spirit of God was speaking to Job. So the things that the Holy Ghost or the Spirit of God was speaking to Job, he esteemed it more than his necessary food, so he was enlightened in his life. I hear somebody. Let's look at verse 29. Quickly, then we'll go back to Job. For by thee, you see, by that light I got through your word, I run through a troop. By my God have I lived over a wall. So that my God he's talking about is the understanding that he got through God's word. That's my God leaping over a wall. Scaling impossible heights. It's spiritual understanding. It comes from God's word. So there must be a pursuit of God's word. You can't be enlightened without pursuing God's word. You can't be enlightened by taking God's word very carelessly. God's word must be exalted above everything else. All this rancor in Nigeria. Please, brethren, put God's word above it. This rancor. Put God's word above it. You will not be swallowed up in Jesus' name. For by thee I have run through a troop. By my God have I lived over a wall. Look at this. Thank you. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He's a buckler to all those that trust in him. He's tried. This word is tried that we're trusting. Well, he's been tried several times. I think Isaiah 2, uh, Psalm 12 that says he's been tested several times. Seven times as through a furnace of fire. Are you here somebody? Let's go back to Job 29 please. So number one, make God's word your priority. Job 29 verse 2 again. Make God's word your priority. Priority means first place. First place, final authority. Priority means value. Prioritize light in your life. Every day, every day, I mean it all, every day. Oh, I want to wash, I like how my, Dr. Mike Modoc says it. I want to wash my, you know, you go through every day. You know, you want to take a bath or you want to clean up, right? Because you've been through, you're sweating everything. See, just as it is for your physical body, that's how it is for your mind. You have, you, have, you have contacted so many things through the day. Don't go to sleep without giving your mind a bath in God's word. Wash it. All that fear, unbelief, wash it. Wash it. Watch it. Listen to God's word. Meditate on it. Even if it's one scripture, go to sleep meditating a scripture. Jeremiah 31, 11, because I went to sleep maybe around three something. So I, 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 I was meditating that scripture into sleep. I woke up a couple of hours later, three hours later. Praise the name of the Lord. With Jeremiah 31, 11. That's the scripture that got stuck in my spirit. So I don't, I don't need too many, just one. I hear somebody. The Lord God has redeemed Dunka, Dunka Gomwok. And delivered him, ransomed him from the hand of he that was stronger than him. I just meditated on it. Just meditated on it. 
And God took me, against me, God took me to Colossians chapter 1. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. He has delivered me from the authority of darkness. Translated me into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the dear son of his love, in whom I have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. I can't go to sleep and see a lion chasing me or a snake chasing me. Or a naked witch daughter chasing me. I'm dominion conscious. And I wake up, I'm not afraid for the day. It doesn't matter what I have in my account or not. I wake up with a sense of God is with me. I've consciously involved him in my thought process. I'm not going to go to sleep with the feeling of helplessness or hopelessness. No matter what came, I will wash my mind with God's word. All that I wore in months past as the days when God preserved me. Look at this. When by his, his candle... His, when his candle shined upon my head and by his light I walked through darkness, yes? As I was in the days of my youth when, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. So, point number one, how do you go for light? Make it your priority. Number two, make it your passion. Make it your what? Your what? Passion. When you make God's word your priority, it becomes your passion. Psalm 1, 1 to 3. <laughs> you see believers these days, when you're talking about supernatural, everything is uh, like, please, let's be real, please, let's be real. What? What is more real than God's word? Let's be real, please. Let's be real, please. No, let's be, let's be real, please. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Many of the miracles you are enjoying, if you are real, you will not be testifying those testimonies. If you are real according to the world. Look at Psalm chapter 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standeth the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight Kai, is in the law of the Lord. Let's say the word of God. In his word does he meditate day and night. So, help me tell your neighbor, close marking. You don't give fear the opportunity. Day and night. You see, so you, so you need those kind of people. Yeah, some of us go to work. We can't be an ostrich. We, 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 we meet people, transact business, do all kinds of things during the day. But you can, you can decide who is in your closest circle. Meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You know some believers still say, yeah, the Bible says, whatsoever I do shall prosper. What about Psalm verses 1, 1 and 1, 2? And 2a and 3a? Before you get to whatsoever you do shall prosper, you must be that man who standeth not in the city of scornful. You must go through that. You meditate day and night then whatsoever you do prospering shall be the natural result because you cannot do that and be led wrong that whatsoever he does shall prosper you see god he put his word first so that as the word of god comes it changes your desires it adjusts you and it sets you on course with god's plan for your life so whatever you do prospering is the fruit is the fallout of it because the word of god has come to enlighten you are you here somebody so as you make the word of God your priority, it becomes your passion. Hallelujah. As it becomes your passion, it will now become your pursuit. Proverbs 18 verse 1. Glory to God. I said glory to God. From priority, you make it your priority, you do that deliberately, it will now become your passion. As it becomes your passion, it will now affect, it will become your pursuit. Through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddles with all wisdom. It will affect your decisions. It will affect the way you see things. Are you somebody? That's why you begin to rise above the darkness in this world. And start walking on the waters of life. Are you here, somebody? I said, are you here, somebody? <laughs> I have some people, one or two of them that, you know, they're, they're very, they're wonderful people. They're not bad. They're not anything. Some of them are relatives. And, because oh, what shall we do? Eh? This is this, this. This money is this. This money is that. Don't worry. God is taking care of us. God will always take care of us like he has always taken care of us. Are you here, somebody? No, I'm not going to allow that conversation to dominate my life. Are you here, somebody? I'm going to move it in the direction that I need it to go. Praise the name of the Lord. And if I see the people around me, I can't do too much about it. I just find a way, a way to get out. Because I'm not going to allow that filth in me. Are you here somebody? 
Don't think you can't be affected. Oh. You have to protect your heart. It becomes your pursuit. He said, through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intimateth with all wisdom. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So make God's word your priority. It will soon become your passion. As it becomes your passion, it becomes your pursuit. This is the pathway to separation. This is the pathway to exemption. John chapter 17 verse 17. The Lord Jesus Christ himself said this. Sanctify them, O Lord, in his prayer for us. By thy truth, thy word is truth. Sanctify means separate. That means there's an exemption for you. I said that means there's an exemption for you. There's the reality of an exemption in the word of God. There is. But you must position yourself for it. Are you here somebody? Thank you Lord. We'll stop here for tonight. Praise the Lord somebody. You want to win the war against fear? Walk in the light of God. The light of God's word. Now let me give you one more thing. First John chapter 4. Let's start from verse 7 please. We'll read a few scriptures there. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Maybe some things... Some things I'm saying today are a bit too heavy, eh? Hello? Maybe they're a bit too heavy. God will grant you grace to digestive juices to assimilate them. Maybe I'm talking very heavy because your destiny is very important. Are uh, you here, somebody? You know, sometimes we have to talk in church. I mean, talk. Uh, we shout a little bit, but let's talk. Let's, let's think a bit. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not God, he that loveth not, I beg your pardon, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice, the sacrifice that paid for our sins. Verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time, but if we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. Verse 14. And we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. Now, we have known and believed the love that God has toward us. How do we know the love God has toward us? Because he gave his son for us. The Bible says we have known and believed the love that God has toward us. God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Hallelujah. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Now verse 18. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts away all fear. Because fear has torment. But he that feareth is not made perfect in love. Are you here somebody? Now number one, we know God loves us because he gave his son for us. God did not first, we did not first love God. God first loved us. How do we know God loved us? He gave his son to be a sacrifice that paid for our sin. I hear somebody. Now he's saying there's no fear in love. Perfect love casteth away all fear. You know this? You must walk in the light of God's love for you. That's why I said in the beginning of the service, God loves you. Everything is all right. Are you here somebody? Say with me, God loves me. Everything is all right. How do you know God loves you? He gave his son for you. Not because you have an electric shock. Say he gave his son for me. Please rise to your feet if you can. Say God loves me. He gave his son for me. Now remember Romans 8.32. If God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for you, how shall he not also with you, with him, freely give you how many things? All things. Say God loves me. My needs are met. Say God loves me. My body is healed. Say God loves me. I'm provided for. Say God loves me. I'm protected, defended, and shielded. Say God loves me. My life is redeemed from destruction. Say, God loves me. I'm preserved. Now, what else is your need today? Say, God loves me. That need is met. Glory to God forevermore. And I tell you, in this wicked system, God preserves you. I said, God preserves you. So the more you meditate on God's love for you, the more fear is dispelled. Praise the name of the Lord. 
and the more faith comes alive. Faith for provision, faith for healing, faith for health, faith for preservation, faith for protection, faith for anything you need comes. It comes the more you meditate on God's love for you. What is God's love for you? He gave his son for you. Are you here somebody? So tonight as we partake of communion, it is life for life. Christ gave his life for you. There's nothing else that has not been given for you. Now let's look at this Psalm 1116. Psalm 116 verse 8. Thank you Lord. Christ gave his life for you. There's nothing else that has not been given to you. Praise the Lord. And we remind ourselves about that on communion table today. Now today I'm speaking some things the Spirit of God put in my heart to declare over communion. In this season of election and the next few weeks and months that will follow, there's going to be some drama in Nigeria. I'm telling you this. Father, according to the word of the Lord, they put in my heart, as we partake of bread, uh, your broken body, the broken body of the Lord, the shed, his shed blood, his life given for our life, his life for life. No one connected to this church shall be lost. Amen. There shall be no loss in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I speak over you perfect preservation. Perfect protection. And perfect provision. No matter the rancor in this country, you are preserved, you are protected, you are provided for supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ. For thou, O Lord, hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Verse 9. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that because Jesus' body is broken for you, because his blood is shed for you, because his life is given for you, you are preserved. You and your loved ones 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 are, ones are protected. Receive diverse deliverances and diverse interventions in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Though a thousand may fall by your side and ten thousand by your right hand side, none of these things shall come near you. Only with your eyes and ears will you see and hear of the reward of the wicked. It will not come near you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only are you protected and defended, but I declare that you are provided for. In this Next few weeks and months, you shall rise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will advance. You will prosper. You will make progress in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Dear Father, we thank you for your great love for us. Today again, we thank you for this covenant provision you have made for us oh with boldness in our hearts we approach the throne of grace the throne of love gives that throne where your blood has been shed for us the blood of your son where the body of your son was broken is broken for us where the life of your son is given for us it is life for life ah this table changes naturally hopeless situations to divine possibilities is a table of miracles is a table of signs and wonders is a table of preservation a table of protection defense safety is a table of abundant provision is a table that changes men's stories is a table that connects us to the very power the very unlimited power of almighty god you have told us as a ministry this year that in this place there shall be no incurables. In this place there shall be no impossibilities. In this place there is a covenant of one thing and one thing alone. A covenant of life. So tonight as we partake of your broken body and shed blood and life given for our lives. We declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Perfect pro pro preservation over your people. Perfect protection over your people perfect provision father i thank you 
we draw a bloodline of exemption round about everyone under the sound of my voice online and on site and all of our brethren connected in their heart to this ministry wherever they are anywhere in this world we draw a bloodline of the precious blood of Jesus round about them we declare there shall be no loss in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ these ones are exempted from all harm and evil I declare that these ones enjoy supernatural occurrences I see your people being lifted I see your people being promoted I see your people being preserved I see your people advancing and making progress we put a mark on your people Lord we put a mark on your people oh you're the Lord of the angel armies we thank you because you have stepped into potentially hopeless situations to turn it around tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we stand with those against whom the siege of hell is fierce against their finances against their health against their families against their destinies we stand in this blood covenant tonight and we declare that siege of hell over in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we command the light to shine in darkness in the name of Jesus we declare the battle to turn in their favor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ let your heavy hand be upon your people in this season of general elections in our dear country and the aftermath thereof I declare that your hand of separation is upon your people your hand of preservation is upon your people your hand of protection is upon your people your hand of provision is upon your people in the midst of any circumstance your people will continue to rise you continue to exempt your people from all harm you continue to create situations around that will favor your people I thank you for it week after week there will be testimonies on this altar. Week after week, your people will come back here rejoicing. Week after week, your people will keep making steady advancement and progress. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. And I pray in the name of Jesus for enlightenment upon every life. Eyes that see and ears that hear and a wise and understanding heart. And I speak strength to every heart. Courage to every heart. You're the God that lifts us up in the presence of the enemy. You're, God, you're the God that, pre, that prepares a table before us in the presence of the enemy. Oh, you're the God that causes our head to be lifted up above the opposition. So shall it be for your people. Thank you, Lord. 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 Whatever other desire is represented here, tonight by your broken body and shed blood, by your life given for our lives, a way is made. The crooked is made straight. The rough is made smooth. The valleys are exalted. Ah, that thing that looks so complex. The next thing you see is the solution. A way is made for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are enlightened by the enlightenment of heaven in the name of Jesus. You discover you can't be stranded. You discover that wherever you thought was an end, it has become a bend. Oh, you discover... That you're moving upwards and forwards. Because the light of heaven is your portion. Somebody's going to wake up tomorrow with clear direction. Somebody's going to wake up tomorrow and the path will be made clear to you. Days of anxiety and uncertainty are over forever. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We receive it in Jesus' name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight. 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 Sir, Ma, you will not be stranded. I said you will not be stranded. You will not be a victim. Satan will not have any cause to rejoice over you or your family in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Darkness has turned to light for you in the name of Jesus. Out of every dark situation, God has caught light to shine in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are taking steps that will advance you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord has gone ahead of you like a mighty warrior. You are preserved. Father, we thank you. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise tonight. If you believe the Lord has gone ahead of you like a mighty warrior, give the Lord a shout of praise tonight. Glory. I said glory. Your testimonies are multiplied in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will come back service after service with testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. 
Let's lift up our hands and thank him tonight.